Hey guys, it's John. You're on the JRB Tree Climbing channel. JRB Tree Climbing is also the name of my website, my Facebook group, and my Patreon, should you wish to support me in my journey with safe climbing. About a year ago, I came up with a new hitch, which I will be introducing you to today, and I'm calling it the Longhorn Hitch. It's kind of a variation on, on the bull hitch and the buffalo hitch I already showed you. I'm going to show you how I tie it and how I tested it. Uh, but the reason I devised it was to also create a soft shackle. So real quick, it's here's a con single continuous loop of, of six millimeter cord or length I should say, and, and it's attached to a carabiner with a cinching hitch. It's cinching. And so in that light, it is both a bend in that it's joining the two ends of the cord but also a hitch and there's a number of applications for it and Kate point one is if I remove that carabiner and expose that loop I can bring the end through pinch it closed and create a soft shackle there's multiple ways to close this I'll show you in the lab this is the easiest way a soft truly soft shackle has been formed and the other way to do that, and I needed this, and I wasn't aware of another soft shackle which allowed it quite so easily, is I can use a carabiner as the toggle. So it's no longer completely soft in that there, there is a hard implement, but I can use this for different rigging scenarios in this kind of a configuration where I, I am confident that the shackle will stay in its current form and provide ultimate security. So uh, slightly embarrassed but still trying to keep it real. Uh, I'm self-filming as you can tell in my front yard. I just broke both the shackle and the hitch itself and had such difficulty in, in breaking it that I also damaged my uh, brand new line grip line scale 3 which I didn't quite have uh, rigged with the proper amount of slack in the cradle had the right idea just not quite the right rigging so I'll be sending that in for repair but a pretty good indication that you know I really don't have the kind of test facilities to do this kind of testing and so if you in uh, your circles as you're watching this have any resources for me in terms of where we can test some of the stuff I'm all ears but uh, the good news is the test was extremely successful the hitch and the soft shackle uh, be exceeded my expectations so let's show you how to tie them so it was about a year ago I started my journey of research looking into soft shackles as I realized some applications for them in my climbing methods however I didn't find any that met all of my requirements and some of them were quite difficult to tie and I decided well there's there's got to be a better design out there and I think I've come upon one in the process of testing that out over the last year I realized that within the soft shackle is a, a new hitch it I'm not I'm call this the longhorn hitch and I'll show you why so about a year ago I did a video on the showed you the girth hitch so that's the girth hitch I showed you how to transform it into a bull hitch and I showed you how to transform that into a buffalo hitch which keeps in that bovine theme and is really just a stronger variant of the bull hitch and is cinching and and secure well in order to uh, use this for certain applications I would need to take the two ends and join them together in a bend or I might need to start with a, a sewn or tied Prusik loop. So let's just create a quick, quick bull hitch here. It's a quick bull hitch out of my Prusik loop. 
but I've always got to deal with this sewn end or, or a tied bend, and that's not always convenient. Uh, and so there are some applications for the buffalo hitch, which eliminate this, in addition to the soft shackle, which it enables. So let's start by showing you how to tie the longhorn hitch. I have got in my hands 72 inches or 183 centimeters of seven millimeter uh, sterling nylon accessory cord. And I'm going to take approximately, I'm going to overlap them in this fashion. So I've got about 18 inches hanging down in front of me and that'll comprise my working ends and I'll tie them on the carabiner. Let's put the 18 inch strands through and hanging down in the front is the loop. Got you zoomed in nice and tight so you can watch the action. I start by let's take with the right side. I'll take the right side go around the front and rotate it around a full 360 degrees. I'll repeat that with the strand on the left. Go around the front over the other, the other strand and interlocking it in the process and around 360 degrees. And so the strand on the right is the under strand and the strand on the left is the over strand. In the next portion of the hitch we'll alternate that and I'll allow the strand on the right to become the over. Still working with the strand on my left, I will put it up and along the host. And with the strand on the right, I go in the back, it's, it's working in the back, and I repeat that up and along the host, but behind the other strand. And in so doing, when I bring them to the front, the one on the right is now on the left, but it is an over strand. It's crossing on top of this one. So I've alternated uh, which strand is under and which is over. Now I take both strands and I pass them up under the, the front two strands, original crossing strands. and I dress that out. That is the Longhorn hitch. Let's get in close and inspect it. On the side. Other side. And the back. I can work these strands out and again it's cinching cinches just like the bull hitch and the buffalo hitch. I'm going to prescribe that if we're using this for any kind of a life safety application I feel more comfortable especially that we're in the beginning of our journey with this hitch that we we built this with long enough tails that we create a stopper knot on on the front and I can do that with just two both strands forming an overhand knot. It's, it's a flat overhand bend technically. It just makes sure they can't ever go anywhere. And I've created a secure long horn hitch. In order to transform this into and it's stable, right? I could throw this in my bag. I can do anything I want with this. It just doesn't come apart. It's always going to be there. I want to turn this into a soft shackle. It's a simple matter of taking the bite on the end, passing it through, cinching down, and I just now, I need to toggle this to make sure it doesn't pull through, right? I need to make sure it doesn't, that, that doesn't happen. So how do I toggle it? Well, I've got a, I've got a lot of options. Uh, a purely soft shackle and one that's surprisingly strong is to just take this and pass it over the end. 
This is incredibly strong. It's incredibly strong and it's very stable. You know, you can, you can toss that. It just, just doesn't come undone. Now, I'll note, if you want to pull your vehicle out of a ditch, you know, go to an auto shop and get, get a soft shackle that's designed for that. Even though this is very strong, and even though under normal climbing loads that you might put on it, it's easy to, to take apart. I'm not saying that if you don't take this uh, to an exorbitant load that it might not get a little jammed up. That's not our application. We can't generate those kind of forces without a catastrophe. And if we had a catastrophe, we, we don't mind uh, you know, having trouble untying this, and we don't mind throwing it away if it was jammed. It's an important distinction for non-slack climbers to understand that the only time we're going to, uh, you know, really, there's no way. There's no way to generate excessive forces if you're not, if you're managing slack as you, as you climb. And this is perfect for that, perfect for that application. So let's take that apart like that. So properties of the um, longhorn hitch. Well, it's a hitch in that I can put it on a, a host, I can tie it around a host like I did, but it's also a bend in the sense that it's, it's encompassing both working ends or it eliminates the need to tie a bend. It's very strong, it's very stable, and of course transforms into a soft shack shackle. And the last point is with, with that soft shackle, we have options. That that toggle, that didn't need to be soft. It could have been hard. We could have used a carabiner as the toggle. So I couldn't completely call this a soft shackle because it has a rigid toggle, but there are applications for this and it is, uh, it's quite strong and quite stable. Okay, so let's, let's tie it again and then we'll just talk about a couple of the applications. Okay, this time I'm going to tie it around my finger instead of the carabiner. Let's get that out of the way. So I'll fold that over. And so this would be four equal segments. I'll lengthen this just a bit. I'll prescribe that with seven millimeter cord. We want about 18 inches or 48 centimeters of working end in the back. And using my thumb as the host, I'll start on the right side, bring that around a full 360 degrees. Using the strand on the left, bring it around the front, go around a full 360 degrees. Still working with the strand on my left, I go up parallel to my thumb, and now the strand on the right is behind, it'll stay behind the other strand and go up and through. So got that good symmetry. And now both strands go up and under here. One and two. I'm pulling every way I can, get that nice and snug. And again, if I was using this for a soft shackle, I'll put in an overhand knot in this fashion. All right, and if for the soft shackle, I like a little bit of room here, right? Because that's where that's where the the bite is going to grab. So. For a soft shackle application, we just leave a little bit of room here. If we're using the hitch for some sort of a secure life safety application, then we'd want as little room as possible here. I'll go ahead and, and dress it out for the soft shackle. So I would tug on these really hard. I just don't want to get in your field of view. So now I've got that uh, really uh, soft shackle in the open position, can leave it in my pocket, in my saddlebag. I want to form a soft shackle. I go through the end, cinch that snug, 
and then toggle it. Option one is the carabiner. Option two, truly soft shackle, is to grab that bite. Put some tension there, and that is extremely stable. Okay, so let's let's talk about. So I got the shackle on my hand. Well, what could we do with that? Well, frankly, there's there any time you might need a uh, a carabiner like device, but you don't want metal. For example, it might need to bend around a tree trunk. Might need to bend around something. Uh, in certain rigging applications, uh, a soft shackle would be ideal. I'll bring in a field of view here. So here's one I tied. So this is. Uh, the Longhorn soft shackle. So let's say I was doing a rigging application. Here I have a sewn eye, but I needed this to be larger and I wanted it to be openable. Well, I can use a soft shackle. And although I so option one, option one would be truly soft. But in certain rigging applications, I've learned that it's really advantageous to use a carabiner. Now I'd use a locker for the right application. But then the carabiner can also engage the loop. And what that does is it ensures that the bottom part of the shackle is always open. And so it allows certain rigging scenarios like, well, let's say I was rigging and I needed to pass a friction hitch through the end of this. Well, I, I can't pass it through that eye, but this soft shackle will pass that. That'll all pass through here. There's enough geometry for that to all pass through. So that's that's a rigging application. Let's let's talk about the hitch. There's a lot of applications for the hitch. Here I have a, a JRB ascender hitch that you're familiar with, my my friction hitch. And with the two ends coming out of the bottom, I formed a longhorn hitch. A really compact one. It's upside down relative to the, what you just saw. And I'm going to take those two ends and have them straddle the rope and then put a carabiner grabbing the rope. And look what happens. I now can, can grab on the carabiner in climbing applications. I can load this carabiner, right? It'll take the full load. And then in transition, if I simply shove up the carabiner, everything goes up right? And in a tether application or a lineman's belt, I get that kind of operation. And it's noteworthy that there is some friction happening here. So any friction that is added to this assembly with the Longhorn squeezing down on the rope. Well, that friction won't be up here, and it just makes it easier to move. And and that application is not unique to the JRB ascender. It works for any friction hitch. You can turn any friction hitch into an auto tending device with no metal and no tender. So here I have a distal hitch. This is, happens to be six millimeter cord, but that's a distal hitch. But beneath it is a. Longhorn hitch. Can't see it quite so well with this uh, bright multicolored cord. I put my carabiner here. And again, I load it, I slide it. Tether application. Number of applications for this hitch, and that's just uh, just a few of them. There are more and they're still they're still coming to me. But I want to start doing some climbs with this kind of a, a, of a rig and so I wanted to introduce you to the hitch. Now with everything I introduce 
I urge you to use caution, use common sense, approach everything carefully and methodically, and understand that you climb and use these devices at your own risk. But I, I need to introduce them in order to find out if there is prior art. And so if anyone here is aware of uh, this element having been devised before or publicized, please let me know and I'll, I'll retract that and republish and give credit. Um, perhaps this is a variant of something else. But in, in my uh, research, I, I, I don't believe anything like this exists, and I look forward to doing some more formal testing. And speaking of testing, I'm now going to take you out to the aforementioned uh, experiment where I did my best to, to test this machine. And uh, the results were impressive in the sense that this is even stronger than I imagined and almost stronger than my pickup truck. But a uh, um, little embarrassed at the results of the second test because I, I damaged my, the display on my load scale after the impact and wasn't able to get a reading. But I did promise you all that I was going to keep it real and show you what I was working on. And so I will uh, offer up my, my own embarrassment. Uh, uh, for the benefit of releasing this concept. And again, if anyone knows where I can get this tested in a more formal fashion, please let me know and stay tuned for further developments. All right, let's take you out to that test. Okay, so welcome to my laboratory. It's the Chevy. It's the Line Scale 3. We've got that rigged up on a cradle here so as to not damage my scale. And here is the buffalo hitch attached to a shackle here on the truck and a shackle anchored to the tree. I'm just going to do this once just to get us in the ballpark but this is that six millimeter sterling cord at an 8.2 MBS. Let's give you a closer look. Okay so there's the hitch on the shackle wrapped around the other shackle. There's my cradle just a piece of rebar shackled to my truck got the scale in peak mode and if all goes well this is going to break and my scale will be hanging gently in the cradle I got the truck in four wheel low and so let's see what happens all right gentlemen start your engines That was fun. We got 15.55 kilonewtons. 15.55. That's almost double the MBS. That is. Can you see that value? You're gonna have to trust me if you can't, because uh, the lighting isn't really good here. 15.55. Okay, so that was just the hitch. Now we're going to try to break it as a shackle. And honestly, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to break it because it'll be even stronger with the uh, line doubled. I had to hit the gas there pretty good on my truck. Okay, so I decided to do the weakest possible version of the shackle first. So I'm just putting the... I know you're too far away to see this. But this is the weakest possible version where I just bring a bite through and the two lines through. And again, I, I chose the sterling cord not only because I like the cord, but it's also very flexible. And therefore, it should pull through a lot easier than a stiffer cord because I'm using the two cords effectively as a toggle. And so let's pull that and hope I don't run over any neighbors.
Holy moly. I have I was spinning. Oh, and I damaged my scale. The shackle must have smashed the scale. It's bad engineering there. Well, as you can see, I'm a little I'm a little disappointed in that. That was uh We'll see what we can't do about getting that scale repaired, and I'm not planning on repeating this test. Um, but I, I sure believe the uh, the shackle impressed the hell out of me, and so I'm not going to be repeating that with the stronger variants. But um, I do feel comfortable climbing on that. I, I already have. I just haven't subjected it to this kind of test. And so let me just take this opportunity. Obviously, I'm, I'm not qualified to do these kind of tests. As I said before, I don't have all the right equipment, uh, but I am trying. So if you've got, if you're watching this video and you've got a resource for me in terms of somebody who can help me do this kind of testing, uh, it's all for the right reasons. I'm happy to supply the materials. Thank you.